Hello and welcome to the budding watch enthusiast. So today I'm doing my first watch review on this channel and we're going to get right to the wristwatch check because we are reviewing this guy, the Sal Baltimore um, that I picked up and it had to be this one first. We had to do this watch before we reviewed any other watch because this watch um, is the most responsible for me even being in front of you right now doing this video because this is a watch that I picked up um, a couple months ago and it's the first mechanical, automatic, not quartz watch that I've ever owned. And it is the watch that made me interested in watches, that kind of sent me down this rabbit hole, and that got me interested enough in this hobby to want to be here doing a YouTube channel around the hobby. So we have to do the South Baltimore first. Um, it is, it is, it has to be the first one. It just has to be. So Sal Baltimore, if you've not heard of them, uh, is a micro brand watch company uh, that is based here in Baltimore, Maryland, which is where I also live. And this was a kick this was on Kickstarter, um, where they got their initial funding from back in August, which is where I backed it as well. And the watch officially released back in December of this past year. And so I've had it for about two months. Um, so you get to hear my thoughts and impressions. So we're going to go to the review. We'll break down like the specifications of the watch. You guys will get a look at it. And then we'll come back here and get my thoughts and opinions on the watch. All right. So let us take a look here at the Sal Baltimore. Uh, now, this is the, there's two versions of this watch that's available. I have the limited edition. Um, the founder's edition is the normal version that's available. There's, it's basically the same watch. There's, there's only a couple slight differences that we'll cover real quick. But let's take a look at this guy here. So, sorry about the camera reflection. But yeah, there we go. Nice uh, matte black dial there. Checking that out. This is the black and silver. Um, they have this available in a couple other colors too. I know you can get the case in like a rose gold. Uh, as far as the dials go, you can also get it in, in, in a very cool blue as well as white, and I think bronze now as well is a new color that they've introduced. So what are we looking at here? First, the first thing that you can't help but notice, look at this stainless steel case with these grooved edges in the side. Not the only watch to do this, um, but it certainly is an eye catcher right away. I think it's also one of the things that makes this watch seem much, really tall, and it is a tall watch. Uh, we can probably look at measurements real quick as well. So you're looking, you have a 42 millimeter width here, uh, not including the crown, of course. Uh, you have a height of 14 millimeters, which is actually quite tall, especially for like an everyday wear. Uh, lug to lug, uh, it's 50 millimeters. And then of course, uh, the lug width is a crowd pleasing uh, 20 millimeter width, which is nice because then you get a bunch of strap compatibility, uh, which is which is what you want. So take a look at the movement, nice smooth, Mechanical movement here. Uh, this watch has a Miyota 9015 movement in it. Uh, it is that is a 28,800 vibrations per hour movement. Uh, it's a pretty common movement in a lot of micro brands, which of course Sal Baltimore certainly is. Uh, and it's, and it's nice. Like I said, you get that nice sweep of the second hand that you see there. Um, so it's a very good movement. It also does have hacking. So if we pull out the the crown here, the second hand will stop. Uh, and you also have a quick uh, date adjust. Of course, the date wheel down there at the 6 o'clock. Uh, but you can, well, I should probably actually, you know, pull that out the correct. That's a little too far still. Hard to do with gloves on. But it, do, it does have the quick date adjustment. Um, so you can just set the date by pulling it out one click. And then, of course, two clicks, you can actually uh, set the watch as well. It does have a manual wind as well which is very handy. Um, it's about a 40 hour power reserve on this. Um, I mean, you know, a day's worth of wear is good, um, but yeah, about a 40 hour power reserve that you can get with this watch, which isn't too shabby in my, in my estimation. If I could use words, that would be fantastic. So they decided to go, obviously like you see the polished steel bezel um, around the edge here. And they also decided to go with a double dome sapphire crystal, which you can see there. And it's an interesting choice, especially for like the style of watch that this is. I think that a flatter crystal might have been a little bit better. Um, the, the watch looks good with a variety of straps, but I like to wear NATO straps. And that, you know, the NATO strap combined with the fact that this is a tall watch um, makes it sit very high 
on my wrist. So maybe a flatter crystal I would have preferred, but still looks very nice. Um, it does have any reflective coating, which I'm sure that you can see. And it, I've noticed that it has sort of a bluish tint a lot of times with the coating, um, which is neat because when I first got out of the box, like I kept looking at it, I was like, wait, I did get the black one, right? Like they had the options to get the different colors and uh, that bluish tint definitely threw me off a little bit. Um, of course, again, like I mentioned, the date window at 6 p.m., the only complication. And I got to say, I think putting it at 6 o'clock um, mat- makes the watch flow a little bit better. Normally, you see it at 3, but I like what they did here, having having the 12, 3, and 9, uh, having it at 6 o'clock. Glad they did not put the 6 in and cut off the number. Much preferred just having the indice there for the 6 o'clock. Now, the the dial, like I said, very cool. Matte black dial, try to give you a look at that finish on there. Very flat, very nice. Went with a monochromatic design, which I think is great because it makes the dial look very clean and very legible. And I'm a little surprised that they went with numericals all the way around for the indices. Um, A lot of times, of course, you'll get numericals for the primary numbers around. uh, But they decided to do it for the entire thing with this one. And I think that is something you don't see every day. And it makes it look very new, unique. And the other thing that I really like is that they kept all of the compl- all the busyness, all of the, you know, the busy look of the dial onto the chapter ring, which you see around the side, which is where all the, which is where the minute track is. Um, instead of looking at the dial, instead of it being on the dial head on. So I thought that was a really good choice. Um, I'm a big fan of it. The numerals slightly raised. Hard to see. They they almost look. Um, very flat, but they are applied, and they're very clean, very legible. I do also like how they slightly enlarged the primary numbers, the 12, 9, and 3, and and just kept the other ones regular size. Very cool. If you look here, um, we do have a signed crown on the side with the Sal T. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, of course, the Sal Baltimore logo here in the middle, and then just the uh, automatic, you know, water-resistant text there. Oh, before I even move on... um, I love the little, like I said, monochromatic dial, except for these three splashes of red that you can see. The automatic, the seconds hand, and then right there at 12 o'clock on the chapter ring, that's just that little arrow pointing down. I think that that is really cool looking. Um, Really makes that red stand out on there just because it is so, you know, used so subtly. And I think that's great looking. Speaking of great looking, flip it over. We have a display back here. Um, with the, and this is, this is one of the things you get with the limited edition is this Maryland flag rotor with the Sal Baltimore logo also on there as well. Now, if you get the founder's edition, which is the standard one, it's just the Sal Baltimore logo on the rotor. But like I said, I love, 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 love the American flag rotor or Maryland flag, geez, the Maryland flag rotor on the back of this thing. Very, very nice. And the polished steel, you know, going around the back as well. Uh, screw down case back that you have there. Just a really, like I said, I I really just like the look of this watch. I think it looks excellent. Um, You know, it it, it manages to be a very conventional look, you know, appearance, very conventional look, while still kind of standing on its own by having, you know, all of the numerals around here and just having those little splashes of red, the case back, of course, all that stuff. Very cool. Um, I'm going to throw a loom shot right up here in the corner for you. Uh, the loom on the numbers is actually very, very good, but you do have to really charge it up to get that good loom. Like like normal use, the hands light up pretty good, the numerals not so much, but if you really wave a light in front of it, you can get loom similar to the one that you see in the picture here. I also have another picture that I'm going to put up right now, uh, side by side with my Seiko SKX007, so you can you compare the two. Of course, the Seiko a terrific loom watch. It's a dive watch. I would certainly expect it to. Um, but yeah, very cool. And then, of course, um, as you can see on the watch dial as well, you have 100 meters water resistance. I'm still not going to be probably ever going swimming with this watch, but uh, cool. It's still a nice feature to have. And speaking of nice features to have, um, this watch includes a watch winder. This is actually the case that it comes in with the Sal Baltimore branding on it. Um, look, it's a very basic watch winder. Lots of different settings on the back. 
But just the fact that you get that, and this is the case that it comes in, is a nice added bonus that I really do appreciate. Um, a watch winder is probably not something that I would buy normally, but uh, you know, getting it for, oh, well, I guess not for free. I'm sure. I'm sure it's factored in the cost of the watch, but getting a complimentary one with the watch is a nice convenience to have, and it's and it's very cool. I dig it. So the other thing that the limited edition comes with is this strap. Now the strap, um, the watch comes with this from Clockwork Synergy. That is another Baltimore-based company. Um, actually, they're in Ellicott City, which is a suburb of Baltimore. And I, the leather strap is so nice. Um, you can see it does have a signed buckle as well. And really nice clasp also. This is very cool. Now, I know the Founders Edition does come with the, um, I think, a traditional leather strap that just has a regular buckle on the end. But as nice as this strap is, you see it's not on the watch and you're saying, well, I wonder why, you know, why is it not on the watch? Because unfortunately, um, my near eight inch wrist, it does not fit. Just barely, I can kind of get it buckled on the last hole there. Um, but then if you, if, you know, if I flex my wrist forward, it pops the, it pops, uh, pops the deployment class and uh, it pops right off the wrist. That's no good. So that one's there. This uh, two-piece NATO strap also comes from Clockwork Synergy. Also has the Sal Baltimore logo on the buckle. Uh, this one is almost even too small as well, but, uh, but it does work for me. Um, but the cool thing about this watch is that it does work very well with a variety of different straps. It, you know, I've tried it with NATO straps. Um, I have a leather NATO that I particularly like the look of with this watch. Um, regular NATOs are great. Perlon straps are great because the black and silver is, you know, quite a neutral color. It does pair well with a variety of different straps. Definitely want to get like a red leather strap for this one too. I think it'll look great with the, uh, with the shades of red that are on the wash as well. So like I said, it, I wouldn't go as far to call it a strap monster, but it does pair well with a variety of different straps. And that's very cool. Let's uh, check out a wrist shot real quick. All right, so there it is on the wrist, part in the glare. And like I said, even though it's got that 42 millimeter width, now again, my wrist is a little bit bigger, so it's not going to look quite as big, but look at how the lugs are curved down. And also because you have this narrower lug width, it actually does wear a little bit smaller than a lot of 42 millimeter watches do. So if you're someone who has a smaller wrist, who 42 millimeter watch might be a little too big for your wrist normally, you might want to check this out because if we, uh, let me take this off real quick. Again, take a look at the lugs. Um, they do curve in a little bit, but not too much. Um, it's, it's a bit of a straight lug. And again, the, the lug width seems like it is, it looks narrow on the watch. So because the lug width, because the lugs look narrow, it does in, in turn make the rest the watch look narrow as well. So that's very cool. Um, you know, the fact that it looks a little bit slimmer, looks a little bit smaller, and uh, and I think it does pair well with a variety of sizes. So that is the Sal Baltimore. Take one more look at that, and uh, let us go back to the desk, and we will get my thoughts and impressions on this watch. Oh, and before I forget to mention, too, um, performance on this watch, in case you were wondering, I'm, I've been seeing plus seven seconds per day pretty consistently, which in my book is, is A-OK. -okay. I'm totally OK with plus seven and it's been a consistent plus seven. So that means if I really wanted to crack it open and, and try to regulate it, I could, but uh, I'm really not gonna do that for plus seven. I'm perfectly happy with that. Okay, now we'll go back to the desk and get my thoughts on the Sal Baltimore limited edition. All right, so let's start with a few dislikes first um, that I didn't care for with the watch so much. So the first thing, and again, this is more for me personally, is because I like to wear NATO straps. NATO straps are my, are my primary watch strap that I use for most watches because of the size of my wrist. They just tend to fit better than regular two-piece watch straps do. But I kind of wish that the lugs were drilled a little bit, or sorry, the lug holes rather, were drilled a little bit lower and maybe a little bit more to the outside of the watch. If you look at this, sorry, the pic pictures over here, I can never get it right with the camera. Pictures over here, you can see where they kind of drilled the lug holes and they had a little bit more space to play with. I think they did it this way so that the 
like a two-piece strap would be a little bit more flush with the casing and there wouldn't be that gap in between the casing and your wrist. And you can actually see that here. Um, this is a two-piece NATO strap that I have it on. So there's not a big gap there, um, but it does make it challenging when you're trying to use like a thicker NATO strap or I also have like a leather NATO strap that I like to wear it on. It still fits, but you got to really feed it through. And, and if you look at the spring bars, they're kind of bending outward a little teeny tiny bit, like not enough that they're going to snap off or anything, but it's just, I do wish that I had a little bit of that extra real estate in between the watch case and, and the spring bar and the tension bar um, to, to kind of, uh, to, to just have more room for, you know, thicker straps, uh, one piece straps to slide through. So that's, that's one thing I didn't care for. Um, also the included leather strap, which again is a very good quality. Um, and it's got a terrific, you know, we looked at it in the video, the nice clasp and everything. It just doesn't fit my wrist. Um, you know, I have a close to eight inch wrist. That's a pretty big wrist. And again, for 95% for of you out there, probably won't affect you. The, the leather band that it ships with is great and you can use it and it's fantastic. But for me, I couldn't. And that was kind of a bummer. Um, this two piece NATO strap that I have also coming from Clockwork Synergy does fit. Um, just barely, again, just barely. I can, if, if I'm, ha if my wrist is a little swollen, then can't really use that either. But, uh, today it's okay. But, uh, but yeah, I, I do kind of wish that the included strap was a little bit larger. And again, it's, it's a normal size strap. You know, I'm asking for a long strap, which is not going to come with really any watch that I don't, I don't think. Uh, but that, again, that was just one, one little thing for me. The blue tint um, on the anti-reflective coating on the crystal, your mileage may vary. I don't mind it. Um, it looks kind of cool to me sometimes when, uh, when you catch in the right light, it, it does make the dial look a little bluish and that's fine for me. Um, you might not care for it too much. So that's, that's more of a your mileage may vary thing. And then I would have actually liked to see a little bit of a flatter crystal. Um, it's a 14 millimeter height. It's not a dress watch, so it doesn't have to be as thin as like as a dress watch does, obviously. But if you'd gone with a little bit of a flatter crystal, then you could have made it a little bit smaller, would have fit under a cuff a little bit better. Again, that might just be more of a me thing. Again, I do like to use NATO straps. NATO straps tend to make the watch sit a little higher in your wrist, so that could very well be, you know, the reason why that's why that's happening. So those are the few dislikes. Fortunately, there's a lot to love about this watch. And let's get into that. And I think first and foremost, the most, the thing for me that I love the most about this watch is that it is so versatile. You can use it with, I mean, it's, it is not a dress watch, but it still looks great with a suit. And it looks great with, with a t-shirt and jeans. I mean, I'm wearing it today with a t-shirt and jeans. Looks fantastic. It works with the suit. So it, it can kind of go between this everyday, you know, regular watch and, and still wear it in a more dressier setting. Um, it is a robust watch, though I still wouldn't, like, if I'm going on some kind of an adventure or something like that, I'm still more, you know, probably going to bring a tool watch of some kind. Probably not going to bring the Sal Baltimore with me to an adventure. But like I said, I do love the fact that it's really versatile and that you can pair it with, um, with all sorts of different looks. And that's very cool. Um, I love the fact that they kept, and this, this kind of goes into why... It does work as a dress watch. I love the fact that on the dial, they kind of kept it very clean and they left the busyness to the outside on the chapter ring. Cause like I said, on the dial, you just have the numerical indices, you have the branding and that's pretty much it. You have the date wheel on there as well. Just a little complication. And then the minute, the minute track is on the chapter ring. So it's on the outside. So if you're looking straight down at it, you're not getting cluttered with the, you know, having the minute track on there and the numerical indices, and it would have looked a little compressed on this watch. I love the fact that it looks clean, looks almost minimalist in a lot of ways, not quite. I mean, there's still a lot going on there, but it, it, it's a very clean looking dial. Um, and I, I, I appreciate the way that it's designed. I really dig it. The subtle touches of red on the, on the watch is also fantastic because it's pretty much you know, it's, it's, it's a very muted design because you have the black dial and you have the white numbers on there, but then you get the little splash of red on the seconds hand. You get the little splash of red at the 12 o'clock on the chapter ring, which is, I, I think is fantastic. And then of course you get the splash of red going across the front of the watch where, you know, where it says automatic towards the bottom. And I think that that 
is it, it draws your attention to that in a very natural way. Um, and I just think it's great. Like I said, they could they they didn't clutter it up by putting you know all sorts of colors and again keeping with the same design aesthetic that it seems like they're going for. But I love just those little flourishes just to just to catch your eye to draw them towards it. It's very cool. I really dig that. Of course, gotta love the Maryland flag on the rotor with the with the exhibition case back. Again, that's just gonna be for me, being you know from Maryland, growing up in Maryland, living in Maryland. I'm I'm you know I love our flag, great design, and to have that little local flourish on there is fantastic, and uh, and and makes the limited edition to me worth the extra spend. Uh, obviously, for most of you, that's not gonna really be a thing, but for me, I freaking love it. I think it's great. Um, also, love the fact that even though this is a 42 millimeter width case, you wouldn't really know it because it wears. Very slim, and I th and it wears slim, and and I may have mentioned this on the in you know in the review portion, because of the way that the lugs come out um, from the watch, because you have a twenty millimeter lug width, they tend to be a little bit. It looks slimmer because the lugs appear to be slimmer because they come you know straight off the watch, very slight curve to them, but this even though it's forty two millimeters, which is kind of big for like an everyday watch that's not like a tool watch. Even if you have a smaller wrist, you can still probably get away with it. It's not going to look humongous on your wrist because of that slimmer, that, you know, it feels a little bit slimmer than it probably actually is. And then, of course, the fact that it includes the, the winder for free, the fact that it comes with the winder. Um, a watch winder is one of those things that is not a essential accessory by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a nice thing to have, and it's cool that it comes with it. Um... You know, and it's great because if you have two watches that you're switching between on a regular basis, then, you know, you can just grab that, you know, throw the one you're not using in there, keep it keep it wound, keep it going. And look, you know, being able to save probably 60 bucks on a watch winder that I wouldn't have wanted to spend anyway to begin with is pretty cool. Like I said, I, I, I dig that. It's a lot of fun. So overall, I've really, really enjoyed this watch. And I love the fact that it's just... It's, it does stand alone um, in terms of its appearance. I haven't, I, you know, I've looked at a lot of watches. I haven't found anything that looks quite like this. Obviously, you know, there are, there are aspects of it you can find other watches, but just having, you know, this, th this unique, the grooved uh, case stands out. Um, you know, I love the, the minimalistic approach they took with the dial while still having some, you know, some complications in there and some and some visual flair. I think it's a great watch and and I also like I said the versatility is it's still the aspect of it that screams the most to me. I haven't felt the need to run out and grab like an Orient Bambino or another like lower end dress watch because I think this will fill that role. I think that this this will do it admirably, but it's also a watch that I love to wear every day. I love to pair with a different, you know, with a variety of different straps. Um, you know, again, it, it looks great with a two-piece strap. It looks great with a NATO strap. It looks great with a Perlon strap. Um, it, it can be, you know, used many different looks. I, I will say one thing that I kind of wish that I had maybe done when I got this. I was I was debating between the black dial and the blue dial, and I'm I'm happy with the black dial choice. There are some days though where I'm just like. Man, I really wish I had gotten that blue dial because that it's such a interesting shade of blue. Um, and look, I'll put a picture right here so you guys can check it out. It is uh, it was a very cool looking blue. And there are, there are days where I'm like, man, I kind of wish I'd had that one. Um, but uh, but I, I'm still happy with this choice. And again, the black probably pairs better uh, as a more neutral. Uh, color that goes with a variety of different outfits, stuff like that. So overall, I'm I'm very pleased with this watch. Um, it's been it's been great fun, and uh, and it's one that again I don't anticipate ever leaving my collection. Um, not only because I love the watch, but of course the sentimental value that it has being being the watch that kind of got this whole got this whole thing started. I would say uh, is the Sal Baltimore fantastic wrist watch. If you have not checked out any like micro brands or anything like that. I would encourage you to check this out, see if it's something that you might be interested in, uh, because I do think it's pretty good value for money, and uh, and it's it's a solid piece, and I think that most people that pick it up will be pretty happy with it. So that is it. Uh, first review in the books, first of 
probably many reviews that this channel will be doing down the road. Um, thank you so much if you made it to the end. Uh, you can help me out greatly uh, by hitting the subscribe button. If you click on the little watermark, if you haven't subscribed yet, then it'll pop up a little window. You can hit subscribe. Uh, if you hit the bell icon next to the channel, then you will be notified of any new videos, and that would be great as well. Um, uh, if you have not followed me on Instagram, please do that. It's at budding watch enthusiast, and you can see like daily snaps that I take of my wristwatches and stuff like that. Uh, basically, just different ways to follow the channel. If you if you guys enjoyed uh, what we're doing here, uh, please go ahead and follow, subscribe, also like and comment on this video. If you dug it as well, share it if you think that you might have someone or know someone that might be interested in this watch and, and let them check it out too. Um, and thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you next time.